it occurs to me that you may want to make an environment other than just a forest scene, and while I chose the forest theme because the assets that make up a forest are universal enough that you can easily adapt them to different themes, I realized that maybe you want to make something that requires more specific assets. Maybe you'd like to make a desert, a city, or a snow illustration. In this lesson, I'm gonna demonstrate how I go about adding new assets to our pack using the theme of a snow scene. And of course, the first step is always gathering references. I'm gonna go to my Pinterest account and search for snow cartoon illustrations. I'm aiming to find illustrations as similar as possible to the style of the rest of the assets I have already made. If you go for a different style, find references similar to that style. Sometimes it may be hard to find exactly what you're looking. This happened to me here. I could not find illustrations in the style that matched the asset pack the best, but that's okay. That just means that we may have to improvise a little at the moment of drawing. I would recommend you to gather anywhere from 10 to 30 images. Try to search for individual things you think would make good assets, like a nice tree or rock, or in this case, maybe a nice surface. Remember what we said in the previous lesson, always prefer things that look generic and reusable. One thing to keep in mind is that since we are not making a one-to-one -one copy of anything, you can always make modification to something to either make it fit with the style you're going for, or make something more generic and reusable. Ok, so here I imported into Inkscape all the images I gathered. Each one of these has at least one interesting thing I think can be copied. The second step is to make a deeper scout and pinpoint exactly what you think you can transform into an asset. I like to organize them into different categories depending on what I want to take out of them, like rocks or trees or mountains, and of course eliminate any unnecessary ones. So here's what I gathered. From this image I like this long tree in the background. I think they look great and a bit creepy. And they can be reused not only in some winter scene, but everywhere. The other trees also look nice, but they could be a bit difficult to make with the vector tools. You can make it work by being a bit creative, like I said before, but I will leave that as an exercise to you. Continuing with the theme of trees, I love these creepy trees and branches, great not only for winter scenes, but also for other creepy backgrounds. More trees? These trees look awesome. We may need to adjust the style because it is not that vector friendly. This one has a more cartoony style. And here I like two things. I like these arcs. They are a super fast and nice way to draw a mass of trees, especially here where they work like merged trees, similar to our merged trees asset but less detailed. It comes to show that you don't need something super detailed at all to make for a great reusable asset. And the second thing I like about this image are these snowy mountains. Look at these mountains, they are so simple yet they make the composition work. I love them. Again showing that it's not the complexity of an asset what makes them great, but the context where you put them. Another awesome cartoony image, there are a lot of things that I love about this and that we could take from, the trees, the foliage and even the gate. But what makes my imagination flow the most are these big snow-covered rock surfaces. I think they would work great to put somewhere in the middle ground of a snow composition, just like they are here. Small rocks covered in snow, we could use some of those. There are other types of details that can be hard to identify as an asset. Many of these compositions have a snow transition from the trunk of the tree to the ground, which is something that happens all the time in real life. It would be nice to have some of these to add detail to a tree. I guess you could make a version of each tree with that asset on, or probably better and more flexible is to make the snow independent of each tree, so it's up to you to shape it where you want it. An aurora borealis would be nice to have, though that may require a slightly more advanced knowledge of illustrating in Inkscape. I'm winking here while directing you to some of my other courses. Maybe some cabins. This one are nice and generic, perfect for reusability. 
Great, all of these items will be great to add to our collection, but I'm not gonna show you how to draw each. Instead I'm gonna draw three of them to demonstrate the basic vector drawing techniques and how to transform these into nice and reusable assets. This is not gonna be an in-depth lesson on how to draw with vectors, but I think all of these assets here tend to be easy to draw. So let's start with something really easy. Let's make this big rock with the snow on top. Remember, we don't want to make an exact copy here, we want a rock of the same type but different. When you draw using vector shapes, you have to separate between the different shapes of an object and treat them as separate things. In this case, this rock can be thought as made of two shapes, the rock shape and the snow shape on top. Let's start by making the rock first and then add the snow on top. Let's draw an arc with the pen tool. When building these sort of arcs, I find it easier to just draw spiky shapes and introduce the curvature later on. So just make a triangle and when you're done, select the node and go to the smooth node button in the tool controls. And now you have a node you don't need anymore. A rule of vector illustration is that nodes in curved sections are getting in the way and if you can, you should delete them. And if you want to make the shape even more complex, like the one in the background, remember that you can add nodes super easy with the node tool by double clicking. When you're done, you can sample the colors from the illustration itself, though later on, if you're gonna move it to an asset pack, you may want to go for a less specific color scheme. Okay, and now for the snow. Here in the reference, the snow is made with these arches. Remember what I said about making arches? I find it easier to just draw them as triangles. So here I'm gonna make a shape with triangles and draw well outside of the rock area. Now the classic technique to remove the excess. You should be familiar with this technique. If you don't remember how it goes, rewatch the inkscape mini course. And now repeat the same steps to smooth the corners, remove the nose and adjust them so they look cool. The key is in the reference. Pay attention to the details of how the shapes and rocks are handled. If something doesn't look as you expect it, it is almost always because you haven't paid as much attention to the small details in the reference. One final thing, these rocks indicate detail with a line that goes over them. I know that this is a particularity of the style of the reference that is not in the style we are working on. The assets I made don't have this type of line as textures, but just for the sake of getting familiar with the process, let's add it. This is just a quick line made with the pen tool to indicate the smaller changes in the surface of the rock. There are some other things in the reference that we could have implemented in our version, like the texture or the more complex snow pattern or rock patterns, but this is just a demonstration. I'm gonna leave the decision to include those details to you. Just keep in mind that the asset doesn't have to be something that has to fit in the illustration you took it from, and it can and should be its own thing. Let's move on with a slightly more complex asset and make one of those creepy trees that I like so much. The only difference with these assets is that the shape is a bit more detailed, but that's about it. It should be easy to make. To tackle this type of complex looking object, you need to simplify it mentally. Think about the big shapes first. This way you can design the way it's gonna go easily. In this case, if you think about it, all of these trees can be simplified with a simple triangle. The main trunk is a triangle, and the branches as well. They are not exact triangles, but triangle-like things. You probably get what I mean. So let's start from there. With an eye in the proportions, with the pen tool, make the triangles that makes up the tree. Keep the trunk and the branches separated as different objects. If you draw it as a separate object, it is much easier to edit and make variations later on if you want. And remember, we don't want an exact copy of any particular tree in the reference, we want one of its type, one that could more or less be one of those. Great, we have the big shapes. Here you may find it useful to give it color and remove the line. With the node tool, add multiple nodes all around the surface and move them to sculpt all these bumpy shapes at the side. Very important, 
Keep the notes as corners so they are easier to handle. Keep them up to the last step. So if you ever accidentally make a note smooth and accidentally introduce a curvature, remember that you can transform any node into a corner node type by selecting a node and double clicking on the corner node, giving you a straight section once again. And now you can probably see how similar it looks to what you want, only that it is a bit choppy. To solve the choppiness we are gonna finally introduce the curvature. The trick I have to draw this in a controlled way is to use the shift key while dragging from the node to pull the handle out, giving you much more control. You need to do this from the two handles that makes up a segment of a curve to fully affect the section. And we are done with the tree. As you see, this wasn't as difficult at all. This process of working with a straight section to then, at the final step, introduce the curvature is the main way to draw these organic looking objects. And in the final example, I'm going to show you how to draw man made objects. Constructed objects require a slightly different process. They usually will be made of a larger quantity of shapes, but the good news is that they tend to be much more geometrical and therefore much easier to draw and modify. What's more, constructed objects tend to be much easier to make variations because they are themselves kit bashed together. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's make one of these cabins. Perfect to add to a far middle ground on a snow illustration. The key to draw these constructed objects is to hyper focus on the different shapes that makes them up. Draw the shapes by separate and then assemble them together. Here you can see the roofs, the walls, the doors and windows are all rectangles. Like I said, super easy to draw. After you're done, you assemble them together. And remember that it's super easy to mess around with the proportions and make some quick variation. And as a quick tip to do that, try to be smart at the moment of grouping the different sections of the asset together. For example, this shape that makes up this chimney can be grouped together and in this way can be used for other variations much more easily. Like I said a minute ago, keep bashing the asset itself. And that's it for making your own assets. Hopefully now you have a bit more of an idea of how to approach adding stuff to your collections. There is no escape to drawing if your goal is to make an illustration, not even with an asset pack. So it's always good to practice adding more and more stuff. Having said that, I'll be adding more items to the pack, so make sure to check the resources every once in a while.